All right, so um, before we get to example one, let's take a look at um, your sine, cosine, tangent ratios in a right triangle. Um, sine, cosine, and tangent are simply ratios of two sides of a right triangle for a given acute angle in that right triangle. So uh, first off, we're going to be dealing with right triangles only right now. So you'll need to see a right angle. And then there are other two angles that aren't right angles or acute angles, so we'll be dealing with those two angles specifically. And um, you typically write a trig ratio. Sine is um, abbreviated SIN, cosine abbreviated COS, and tangent abbreviated TAN of an angle. And then it equals some ratio of two sides. And the three sides in the triangle, let me jump to this page real quick, for a given acute angle. So um, if we're dealing with angle A here, the side opposite angle A is the side across from angle A. The side opposite the, the right angle is the hypotenuse. So you can use the word opposite kind of to, to describe two of these three sides. The adjacent side is the remaining side after you've identified those two. So if we're dealing with the acute angle A, this side's opposite, that's the hypotenuse, so that side's the adjacent. If we're dealing with acute angle B, we go across the triangle, that's opposite B. That's the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. This is the adjacent side to B. So basically the opposite and the adjacent swap places if you swap acute angles. The hypotenuse is what it is for the right angle, right triangle. All right. So <clears throat> the sine of the angle is simply the opposite measure over the hypotenuse measure. It's just a fraction. Uh, depending on what type of answer you want to get, you could leave it as a fraction, maybe make it a decimal, whatever. Uh, cosine is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangents defined as opposite over adjacent. And those are definitions that those are um, just the creations of trigonometry here. All right, so mathematicians back in the day figured out these ratios. They invented these three functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, and figured out they could do stuff with them. So um, this is an invented mathematics, but um, that's just the invention. Uh, the mnemonic devices I have here are just ways to memorize this. I usually go with SOHCAHTOA, uh, but there's also Oscar had a hold on Arthur. Um, your most calculators um, have sine, cosine, tangent in that order. So sine, opposite hypotenuse, cosine, adjacent hypotenuse, tangent, opposite, adjacent. Again, I prefer SOHCAHTOA myself. So again, all this is doing is S for sine, O for opposite, H for hypotenuse. It's just telling you how to memorize those facts. Once you have this information under control, uh, right triangle trigonometry is a breeze. It's real simple to deal with. So uh, there are always three parts. There's an angle and two sides, angle, two sides, angle, two sides. So make sure that when you're creating a sine, cosine, or tangent statement, sine, cosine, or tangent of an angle equals a ratio of two sides. So if we take a look at example one, in the following right triangle, find sine of A, cosine of A, and tangent of A. And they just got these generic sides, A, B, and C. And um, like I was mentioning a few days ago, when we were um, talking about triangles in trigonometry typically, um, they usually name a triangle with capital letters for the vertices A, B, C, and the sides opposite or lowercase letters that match. So, Capital A, opposite, lowercase a, capital B, opposite, lowercase d, capital C, opposite, lowercase c. So sides, typically lowercase letters, um, vertices, usually uppercase letters, and then the opposite pieces have the same letter. So it asks us to find sine of a, cosine of a, tangent of a, and one of the main pieces of this um, that we're dealing with, make sure it's the right triangle first. If it's not a right triangle, which we'll see in, um, I want to say it's section 8.4, we're going to have non-right triangles. There's rules for those also. But <clears throat> when it's not a right triangle, you have to deal with other things. When it is a right triangle, we're dealing with Sokotoa and, and all that stuff. So once you establish a right angle, then what angle are we working with over there? That matters. All right, so sine of A, cosine of A, tangent of A, that means angle A matters. And once you've established the angle you're going to work with, the acute angle you're going to work with, you want to identify for that particular angle which side's opposite, which side's adjacent, which side's the hypotenuse. So which side's opposite angle A? Lowercase a. Lower a, right? So just, again, to get opposite, you're here at the angle, go across the triangle where you get to. So opposite is over here. 
if I'm at the right angle and I go across the triangle, that gets me to the hypotenuse. And again, once you've identified those two sides, the remaining side must be the adjacent side. Right. Once we've established opposite adjacent hypotenuse, now I want to find sine, cosine, and tangent of A. I want you, until further notice, to write SOHCAHTOA anytime you use that idea. So anytime you're doing a sine or a cosine or a tangent, at this moment in time, I want you to write that down every single time. You will um, learn how to spell it rather quickly by doing that. All right? Spelling it correctly matters because the letters all represent something. So, the SO part of SOHCAHTOA tells me that sine of A equals a fraction. That fraction is the opposite measure, which is A, over the hypotenuse, which is C. All right, so again, I can't make A over C any prettier than that. That's the best I can do with what they've given me for a problem. The CAH part, the CA part, tells me cosine of the acute angle A that we're working with equals the adjacent B over the hypotenuse C. Again, I can't make B over C any prettier than that. That's the best I can do with the information they've given me. And finally, the TOA part tells me about tangent. Tangent of the angle A we're working with equals the ratio of the opposite A over the adjacent B. And again, I can't make A over B any better than that. So for this particular problem, that's the best I can do. All right? So. Keep in mind, that's typically beginning of trigonometry, that's usually what happens. You're going to get a lot of sine, cosine, and tangent questions. You'll be able to identify the opposite adjacent hypotenuse in the right triangle, simply write a fraction. Reduce if possible. Obviously, with um, an abstract problem like this, there's no reduction possible.